yesterday, we have seen that all the co-chairing countries in Mitsu Group has urged um, the both party to, in, to 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 end the hostility activities and urge you to reconvene the negotiation without preconditions. But from your perspective, do you think is there any basis for negotiation with the Baku again? Do you still hold the confidence to negotiate with them under under current situation? Well, I would like to first start uh, so, so describing the current situation. After the 1988, when uh, people of Nagorno-Karabakh, after 70 years being a part of Azerbaijan, forced by forced by Soviet power, and with with the breakdown of Soviet Union, they eventually, in a referendum, voted for for getting out from Azerbaijan and declaring gain their independence that they had for hundred years and thousands and years. Azerbaijan's reaction was not a sort of a 20th century reaction, it's just sending troops and starting killing and a conflict which became a war. The war was uh, stopped in 1994 with an understanding that there will be negotiations. And here the Minsk group of OSCE and, uh, took start and with the three co-chairs, as you know, United States, France and, and Russia. And Russia. So, for 26 years there were negotiations. In any negotiation between states or parties of the conflict, commercial negotiations, it never happens that everybody is happy and you come to a conclusion immediately. Sometimes you are happy with negotiations, sometimes you are not happy with negotiations. That's normal life. So you have to be patient because the alternative is a war. Now that alternative, Azerbaijan has decided to withdraw itself from negotiating table and take the path of the war. Fine, it has happened a couple of times, but this was local wars, four-day war in 2016, and there was another conflict in July, this uh, a very local one. But this one, time is different. And what is different? What is different today is Turkey is directly involved in this. Turkey has a lot of military personnel in Azerbaijan, both in uh, the, the main, mainland Azerbaijan and its small part, which is called Nahi Jevan, which, is, which doesn't have a connection with Azerbaijan, it's between Armenia and Turkey. That part now is basically controlled by Turkish side. In mainland Azerbaijan, starting from generals up to officers, advisors, and the worst, Turkey brought with them, hired uh, terrorist groups, jihadists from Syria. And this is not 10 or hundreds, thousands of them. Well, yeah. how on earth a third country interferes in, in a conflict of two states, which is the, the state of Azerbaijan and the small state of yeah. Nagorno-Karabakh, which is, of course, Armenians are support, Armenia and Armenians are supporting them. How on earth you bring into that equation something which is not controllable? Jihadist terrorists, okay? Mm -hmm. And the third thing is that absolute modern uh, technology is used by uh, Azeri and also the Turks because these yeah. are starting from the modern, drones, the, mm -hmm. the modern drones up to F-16s, which is again basically breaking all international law and rule and everything. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely sure that the contract that Turkey has with the uh, United States of America doesn't allow them to do that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely mm -hmm. confident that the agreements that Turkey signed becoming a member of NATO are forbidding them to do that. But they have just ignored all of that. And we now have also factual facts that not only American equipment is used in Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh Republic, it's not only that the drones which are made in different places of the world, including in Turkey, are used there, but they are using them against the Armenia. Last night, Four drones, tur Turkish made, have crossed the border with Armenia and they were the, the heading towards Yerevan. They were shot by Armenian defense systems, but four of them. So this is you a mean the conflict is a now erupt not only in the eastern side, but also in your border and Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now that they have, send, they have sent it, I don't have the final uh, information about where did they enter the border from Turkey side or Azeri, but doesn't matter. These are Turkish uh, drones and they uh, are, are controlled by Turkish operators and they are crossing the border. So we have all the evidence of Turkish involvement. 
Well, they give some uh, reasons why they are doing that. One of the reasons is and you, that they are ethnic brothers with Azeris. Well, I'm sorry. Turkic nations are so big and Turkey has ethnic brothers in north of Caucasus, in every region of Russia, in Central yeah. Asia, I including in the north of China. So if they are looking for ethnic brothers, so they can allow, they can have the freedom of interfering every and each of these states in order to support somehow a call from ethnic brothers. Absolutely unacceptable. Second, they were claiming that there are PKK uh, soldiers or fighters in Armenia. Yeah. Complete nonsense. There is not even one or a half of a PKK. Uh, what we have in Armenia, a small, very small minority of Kurdish Yazidi minority. Mm -hmm. We have other minorities, but this is a very mm -hmm. minor and most of them are Yazidi. They are not Muslim. They are, their faith is Yazidi. And all of them are very good citizens of Armenia. Some of them live in Nagorno-Karabakh. They are very good citizens of that. And when the danger is there, they are, uh, they are basically fighting for, for their own country because they are citizens of Armenia or they are citizens of Nagorno-Karabakh. So this is another nonsense. The third one, which is interesting, Turkey has deployed its military might now along the uh, energy pipelines, claiming that there is a danger from Nagorno-Karabakh that they will bomb these pipelines because they are close. Well, another, another nonsense here. Another nonsense in a form that if Nagorno-Karabakh or Armenians had the intention of bombing that, they would have been bombing it 20 years ago when this pipeline was going to be built. They didn't bomb it. If the first bombs will fly when the first hundred meters of the pipeline was putting in place, they were putting in place, mm -hmm. then there would not be any pipeline at all. Am I right? Because people, mm -hmm. international community and the companies will be afraid putting pipeline mm -hmm. in a place where it's dangerous and there, there is a threat from, let's say, Nagorno-Karabakh. So there would mm -hmm. not be pipeline. But Armenians didn't do that and didn't do mm -hmm. that the next 20 years. And this all 20 years, Azerbaijan was making billions and billions of dollars, selling okay. that oil, okay? Buying arms, yeah. And using that billions, buying arms, and now using that arms, killing Armenia, and now saying that Armenians will bomb it, which is mm -hmm. a round of nonsense, okay? Mm -hmm. So I cate so, categorically deny this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. nowadays, uh, because you have say uh, since Turkish involvement makes the things more complex, and the difficulty cannot be solely solved by a current Minsk Group uh, framework. So, so are you preparing to ask uh, the CTSO countries, especially Russia, to materially intervene in the situation? Is there is the option on your table, or you you will prefer to deal with the? The, the war, the military comfort by the defense power of yours? Okay, the answer is simple. When there was no Turkish involvement, so there were parties of conflict, which was Azerbaijan as a state, and on the other side, it was Nagorno-Karabakh, people of Nagorno-Karabakh, the state of Nagorno-Karabakh, and Armenian state as the guarantor of their uh, safety, okay? As we, we are all, the same nation. And it was clear, and the Minsk group, co-chairs, were, were dealing with this clear situation. Now this has gone being, it's not equalized. Yeah. And all of the co-chairs were trying to be basically balanced, politically correct. If we say yeah. something to yeah. Azerbaijan, we say to Armenians. Now there is no balance here, because there is Turkey. So I think we can go back to the Minsk group, when we exclude Turkish influence, when the Turkish army withdraws there and they basically uh, help Azerbaijan in education, culture, science, humanitarian, good luck. Nobody is against that. But if they are involved in this, this equation is not equal. There is no equilibrium here and it's going to be very difficult for Minsk group, for three co-chairs to deal with a new entity which is a part of the conflict, which is Turkey. Now, yeah. uh, about uh, CSTO, the organization, and our relations with Russia and so on. The situation that I described to you is already complex because of presence of Turkey. Yeah. I'm asked always the question, 
Will Iran be involved? Will Russia be involved? We are completely unhappy that we have one external player getting in and just destroying everything. So our intention is to ask the international community to, to put pressure on Turkey so Turkey withdraws. Then we can go back to the normal Minsk group process. But any involvement of any third party will make the whole thing much more complex and less manageable. And we will have something like Syria. But this Syria, that Syria is, will be about 10 times more, more problem because in the heart of Caucasus and it will spread all over the place. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering because um, I think, I believe your, your people and the people at, uh, at the other side region, uh, outside of the Republic are very, very tired of for this kind of, a, of an offensive from, from Azerbaijan for decades. So uh, I'm wondering what's your ultimate blueprint for the Republic of uh, Artsakh? Because we have heard here some voice that ultimately some argue that Armenia should finally uh, uh, unified with Artsakh, ultimately. And some yeah. will argue also that you should uh, give them a de jure recognition, sovereign recognition to the state. Yeah. And would you accept, because what we heard from Baku is that they say there is no option for uh, to keeping the status quo. The only mandatory goal for them is to so-called liberate it, basically conquer the Karabakh region, the Nogoro Karabakh. Would you accept that? And they say, if we take control back, we will give them high degrees of autonomy and something. What will be your options for Nagoro Karabakh? Okay, let me uh, answer to your question. You asked two questions about yeah. Armenia recognizing Nagorno Karabakh as an independent state, or maybe going and signing specific treaties with this state, and the Baku's approach that is completely denying any the negotiations, and they are claiming that there is only one solution, and that solution that they withdraw, that they push every Armenian from that land. Pushing yeah. every Armenian from the land that they lived for a thousand years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just answer one by one. In the case of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh, our approach is to be as patient as possible. We could have recognized Nagorno-Karabakh 30 years ago, the state, or 26 years ago, but we decided since we have a negotiating table and we're talking about the final status, we should not make it more complex through our recognition. Let's wait until we will find, come to final solution between Nagorno-Karabakh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, and then we will recognize what is there. The only intention that Armenians didn't do that to being patient and not disturbing the peace process. The only one. Of course, with the war, happening now and with the declarations from Azeri's side Armenia maybe will not have any other choice just not recognize and openly support and why we are supporting Nagorno-Karabakh because it's a historic Armenian land that was given to Azerbaijan for 70 years by Soviet rule and that rule was famous in creating problems between all nations look at at what uh, are the drawed boundaries by comrade Stalin he created problems between Georgians, Russians, Ukrainians, Russians in uh, several republics of Central Asia and so on and so on. This is one of them. I mean, what has happened here is that in order, in order to give a chance to peace talks, Armenia was very conservative, very patient. This is Armenian way of handling because we believe in peace and negotiations. On the side of Azerbaijan, what Baku is saying is called in our modern uh, vocabulary, ethnic cleansing. Basically, we, you just push everybody out and conquer the thing. So if they start that sort of a policy, where is the limit? So then if we come to a world where there'll be probably two, three states only. <laughs> they are the strongest that will conquer everybody. I think, where is our humanity? Where are international No. Where is the U United Nations and so on and so forth. So from that point of view, whatever is Baku is saying, is completely unacceptable for us. And I will emphasize this not only because our, our, in, in the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh, the Armenians living there, not only that, 
They are not only bad that they were living there historically all the time, but but very, very, very important that today's war where Turkey is involved, every minute of Armenian life, be that in Artsakh, be that in Armenia, be that in Russia, be that in California, be that in any country of the of Far East, any country of the Middle East, Arab world, reminds you about the Armenian genocide that happened in 1915. So what we see now that Turkey unfortunately has decided mm -hmm. to finish the job that was left unfinished in 1915 mm -hmm. when they killed one and a half million Armenians and basically could push them out from the historic lands that they were living. This mm -hmm. is the same yeah, thing. Okay. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about history, we have seen that the Baku side has constantly, uh, constantly using the full resolution passed by the UN Security Council in 1993 as their major tool in international law to claim that uh, um, that uh, Armenians or uh, Armenians or the the troops of the uh, of the Artsakh Republic should be withdrawn first. And how would you respond to the 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 1993? for uh, resolutions? Or would, would your government consider to introduce or to compel the national security past the new, a more equal, uh, more balanced uh, resolution towards the current situation? Well, uh, to be honest, at this uh, moment, everything is on the table and we are considering mm -hmm. all, all possible options. Mm -hmm. And just to tell you that there is no way that we can stop Armenian volunteers from Armenia, okay. from diaspora i mean it's it's uh, it's difficult it, million, yeah it, it's it's difficult and everybody remembers the genocide everybody is uh, is very emotional about that and we have people who are standing ready and they are they are already traveling to armenia from from americas from russia from everywhere these are volunteers and there's no way even i can stop them saying that you are not allowed to go and so on so on because they feel that this is again the, the, another scenario that will repeat what happened 100 years ago. Armenians in, in California, uh, Armenians in Middle East, in all Arab world, Armenians in Russia, in Europe, in many other countries, are there because of the genocide. Their homeland was destroyed and they had to run. They uh, ended up in Massachusetts, New York, uh, Boston, in in St. Petersburg, in Moscow, in Crimea, everywhere. Why? Because they were pushed out from their own uh, homeland, historic homeland by Turkey. Now the story, history wants to repeat itself. And for these young people who are the grandchildren of those who had lost their families, who have lost their parents or families killed, who have lost their uh, homeland, they cannot accept this history repeating itself. So there are thousands of volunteers that are ready to come to fight for, the, for, their, uh, for their country. So can we say that if Baku doesn't cease fire first, then your people, your defense arms, your, your, your defense forces, and the potential volunteers as a backup will continue to fight if the, as a regime as a, as a, didn't stop? Well, I can assure you there is no way that Armenians can stop there if, if Baku mm -hmm. has a plan of ethnic cleansing. We cannot allow mm -hmm. this as a, as a nation. Mm -hmm. Nagorno-Karabakh people cannot allow them just leaving their homeland that they lived for thousands mm -hmm. of years. Mm -hmm. There is no way the Armenians in Armenia can allow that and any Armenia and friends of Armenia from abroad can allow this. Yeah. So, and that is why my final call again is, I think if we exclude the Turkish component, Azerbaijan uh, doesn't have the power of mm -hmm. doing this ethnic cleansing alone. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you ex so. exclude the Turkish component, mm -hmm. then it will force Azerbaijan and it will force Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh and Republic of Armenia to go back again to the table of negotiations and find mm -hmm. a, a peaceful solution. Because in this world, mm -hmm. there are no final military solutions. Any military mm -hmm. solution which looks final, mm -hmm. any war solution which looks final, eventually is not final at all. Look what happened after the Second World War. 
Yeah. Germany was divided. Where is divided Germany now? It looked at final. There was West Germany, East Germany. Where is the East and West? There is no. Because we are humans. We live in a different world rather than yeah. the world of killing each other. Yeah, indeed. And uh, finally, I would like uh, I would like to uh, one one thing because nowadays uh, uh, Baku still condemning or still accuse of your you direct your the defense armed forces uh, directly involved into the war uh, war uh, front line of the clawback. Can you tell me uh, what is the relationship between uh, the Armenian national forces and the uh, and the regional defense? Uh, defense forces of the Nagoro, people of Nagoro Karabakh here. Are, are you now commanding together with the same uh, unitary command system, or basically you fight back by back, but rather no, 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 no. Armenia is not involved directly in this conflict. Of course, as I told you, as I told you, they have the the army which is fighting in Nagorno Karabakh is called the Armenian Artsakh, which is Nagorno Karabakh yeah. Defense Army, and that's the army which is fighting. As I told you, there are also volunteer Armenians fighting there. They are not brought there by the third country or the fourth country. In the case of Turkey, it is organized by a, a, a Turkish state, bringing not only their armed forces, their armament, sitting and controlling and helping the Azari army, but they are also brought, as I told you, Mujahideens, which are terrorists. And let's uh, hope this, that if they stay in the region, they will create an, another havoc. Maybe in the north, which is the uh, North Caucasus, which is Russia. Uh, in the south is, is Iran. Here is Armenia. Yeah. And maybe there is a Central Asia. Who mm -hmm. wants terrorists in this, uh, in this world on his soul? I don't want them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed that our Azeri uh, neighbors have allowed them to be on their soul. Mm -hmm. Believing that after the conflict they will go away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. What, what we have seen in the recent several years, wherever they go, they stay. So, uh, until now, do you still have a very high confidence towards the, the now the, the military situation in Republic of Arsakh? I have very high confidence for a simple reason. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if we go back 30 years ago, then I was, uh, I was professor somewhere, then I became I was professor in physics and mathematics, yeah. then I became Armenia's ambassador elsewhere, including United Kingdom, NATO, and European Union, and so on. So I had a lot of meetings with a lot of people. So everybody was telling me the mathematics of conflict, saying, well, Armenia is so small, Azerbaijan is so big, nagorno karabakh is so small, Azerbaijan is so big, they have so many uh, military equipment left by Soviet Union, you don't have anything there. Turkey is supporting them, what is going to happen? And that was the beginning of 90s. In 1994, yeah. the same people were telling that according to their opinion, the army which is located in Nagorno-Karabakh is the strongest army in Caucasus. So you are fighting not only with a gun, a rocket and an airplane, you are fighting with your spirit. And these people that live in Nagorno-Karabakh have unique spirit of mountainous people that were, have, and this invasion is not the first one from Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. They have seen from Lang Temur, Chinggis Khan, they have seen uh, Iranian or uh, Persian troops, they have seen everybody. But they never, never left their homeland. So I have high confidence. Have you talked with the president of the Republic of Arslak so far? Uh, talking yeah. about the, the current situation. Yeah. Me? Yes, of course, I call him. Yeah. I know him mm -hmm. and I, I'm concerned, so I, I call ask what is happening and he tells me his opinion and whatever he has information. But I'm also talking to world leaders as well, trying to explain yeah. to them and to, to explain the situation and ask them for pressure on Turkey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. they have to realize that uh, modern Turkey that has the recent 30 years gone from economic difficulty on economic rise. Now it's going yeah. economically down again. And this conflicts that Turkey is getting involved, south, mm -hmm. north, uh, east, west, look, Syria, Iraq, yeah, Libya. Yeah, Libya, 
before they were also in Egypt, now Mediterranean, Greece, now Armenia, it's 360 degrees around them. So, uh, well, some analysts uh, say this is the return of the Ottoman Empire. Some analysts say, yes, uh, that uh, it is uh, back to what we saw 100 years ago. Yeah, but this yeah. is... Would, would you say... Yeah, sorry, would you say that the offensive launched by by Baku this time was emboldened or even instructed by, by Ankara, would you say that? I will basically restrain myself giving so, sort of a, that sort of a answer to you. But the fact mm -hmm. is that either it was created uh, together with them or Turkey had huge influence on decision making, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. So back to you, you say, uh, uh, let me sum up your argument that if world, the whole world want to defuse the current situation, the major point should be put on Turkey. When Turkey is exactly. back and the things could, be, could become done again. The moment that Turkey stays back, then eventually after a while we will have the ceasefire because parties will negotiate and there will be the Minsk group countries like, first of all, Russia, and then uh, the United States and France, and there'll be a ceasefire, and after a ceasefire, after a while, I hope we can go back to the negotiating table. Otherwise, there can be only escalation of this conflict. And escalation of the conflict, nobody will win here, neither Europe, because Caucasus is Caucasus, and is the connection between Europe and Central Asia and Eurasia, nor even China, because a lot of Silk Road goes through the Caucasus as well. Yeah. Nobody, nor Russia, having terrorists in the south of Russia yeah, on the borders. The and, uh, even Turkey will not benefit from this. I mean, uh, it will create further instability and unhappiness. Look what happened. Saudi Arabia basically put ban on every initial tur Turkish uh, product in Saudi yeah. and the lira went down. Well imagine, yeah. so what's going to happen to Turkish economy with the coronavirus and all of this is happening where the world, both China, us, mm -hmm. Americas, Russia, everybody is fighting coronavirus. So how unhuman you must be knowing that sending your soldiers to fight when you know they will affect each, each other. How unhuman you can be when you are bombing civilians, villages and states, you're knowing that people are trying to be isolated from far each other because there is coronavirus. So there is, for Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh, there are three wars. One is coronavirus, one is Azerbaijan, third one is Turkey. It's not one war. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Mr. President, for your Thank time. You the information is very profound and strong. Strong. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Anytime.